Hello, I'm Janneke. This talk is about uh, GNU mass and the ongoing effort to remove the binary seeds that we inject into our free software stack. Uh, hopefully you'll learn what this new bootstrapping hype is all about. So to crack this chicken and egg problem, which bootstrapping is, I wrote GNU mess. Uh, Messy C is a C compiler written in a subset of Guile scheme. And it comes with Mess, which is a scheme interpreter written in C. <coughs> From the early days of computing, we know that uh, Lisp is, an, is a good way to make the jump from a low-level language into a high-level, elegant language. So you may wonder, uh, before MESS, how did we bootstrap our systems? Well, actually we don't. Well, that's normally because um, GNU geeks as well as Nixos actually use some kind of bootstrap. However, Ludovic Cortez, a uh, developer of GNU Geeks, noticed that um, the bootstrap, uh, the bootstrap uh, binaries that were bootstrapped from are still very large, and that is a problem. So he, should, he suggested we remove those. Um, in the 80s already, uh, Ken Thompson um, uh, gave a talk and uh, saw that um, we have actually a pretty big problem in computing. Um, he called that the trusting trust attack. And uh, so uh, what do we do when a researcher points out a problem that's possibly going to affect everyone and is very hard to solve? So usually we just ignore it. Um, and we want to change that. So um, with uh, GNU Geeks and also uh, NixOS, we have already uh, a bootstrapping story. So NixOS and Geeks are interesting from a bootstrapping uh, experimentation and research uh, point of view because the package dependencies in Geeks uh, form an acyclic directed graph which means uh, there are no bootstrapping loops. That's unlike most other software distributions that are full of loops that you would need to break. Uh, the critical importance of this was noted by Bitcoin developer Carl Dong. Um, he gave a talk about this uh, at the Breaking Bitcoin conference last summer. I warmly recommend that talk. It will take only 18 minutes of your time. Uh, Carl Dong explains uh, how um, by wishing to uh, provide the community with trustable um, binary downloads, they have implemented uh, Gitian. That's a system that uses reproducible builds to do so. So, in computing, uh, bootstrap is slang for uh, doing something which is actually uh, impossible to do. For example, uh, say, uh, say that you wrote the very first C compiler, and you wrote it in C, and you called it GNU CC. Uh, it is impossible to compile that very first C source code into a working GCC binary. So what to do when uh, you're confronted with an impossible task, but you know that something uh, quite similar has been done before? You just ask grandma. So grandma, tell me again, how did you make that yogurt? Well, son, you get some fresh milk, must be good milk, 
and you just take some uh, leftover yogurt from yesterday. Okay, so with that wisdom, uh, we can now create our second GCC compiler. So we take our GCC source <coughs> and we compile it into a working binary. So while this looks like ordinary milk, uh, it actually um, is um, a bit of software that um, has been carefully crafted. It's actually, it's, it's a masterpiece, um, a work of art. Uh, it's bug free, uh, it has been, the, the difficult parts have been peer reviewed and if at all possible, uh, maybe uh, pair programmed some difficult bits or if possible, we even apply formal methods to prove that this, that this uh, second compiler of ours will be bug free. Um, then we apply the recipe <coughs> and we even share our recipe so that others may reproduce the result uh, that we got and uh, produce the same second compiler. And lo and behold, uh, we're reproducible. We got this same second compiler. And as long as uh, they follow exactly our recipe and um, they use exactly our first <coughs> compiler, um, <coughs> then we're reproducible. And uh, we're just as safe as uh, our first compiler was, actually. So what follows from this is that reproducibility is critical, but it's not enough. And even reproducibility with clean source code is not enough. So Carl went looking for something else and found it in Geeks. Uh, uh, so he, he noticed that um, Bitcoin with Gideon, in order to uh, provide uh, trusted uh, binary downloads, uh, when you start to get in build, it all it starts with downloading almost uh, all of Ubuntu. So, in order to create trustable binary download, we first download a lot of binaries that we uh, have to trust. So, yeah, that's not good. So, last year at FOSDEM, I prevented, I presented, <laughs> prevented, uh, I presented the reduced binary seed bootstrap which reduces the bootstrap seed by almost 50%, but it, it removes GCC from our bootstrap seeds, our first compiler, right? So could we improve on that? Well, that reducing the binary seed, in our case of geeks, would mean removing bash, uh, core utils, bzip2, Awk, grab, gzip, patch, sed, tar, xz, maybe a couple more. So that's why I'm very proud and excited that NLNet saw the importance of this project and uh, decided to uh, fund me to create this next step, um, which I'm presenting here, the scheme only bootstrap another reduction by about 50% of the binary seed. Uh, one component of that new bootstrap is uh, GASH and GASH core utils, which are an implementation of these critical binaries in Scheme. Um, while we've been focusing um, quite narrowly on bootstrapping, it's our intention to provide a really rich a shell scripting experience and bring that to Guile. Um, so this is what the current bottom of the bootstrap graph now looks like. The only interesting binaries left here is uh, a scheme interpreter and a scheme compiler, uh, GNU Mess and GNU Guile. So that's the scheme only bootstrap. 
So when Vagrant Cascadian uh, got mass, got GNU mass packaged for Debian and it went into unstable, uh, at the Re Reproducible Build Summit last month, he was wondering, uh, is there anything we can do to, to um, give more trust to this new first compiler that we injected? Um, and um, he thought, well, it would be nice if we could uh, build mass in, and uh, um, do it on different distributions and prove that uh, we get the same binary that tells us something. So uh, when he suggested that, Dave Terry and Jelle van der Waal uh, uh, der <coughs> joined in and we actually did that. Um, so is there any more? we could do. Carl don't think, think so. So, stepping back, back a bit from this, um, given that we dislike downloading binaries from the internet and trusting them, why not stop doing so altogether? So that's what I'm proposing to do the coming year, um, to create the full source bootstrap. Then is there anything left? Well, <laughs> um, we do it on the Geek system. So we have the Geek's build daemon, we have the user land, and we have the Linux kernel. And at the Reproducible Build Summit, uh, Ludovic uh, actually built um, a, pa a Geek's package in the initial RAM disk. So with that effort, uh, user land and the, 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 the build daemon are removed from the picture. The next, next target, obvious target, is Linux. So the last re uh, release of MESS, version 22 of this month, um, uh, starts to run on the GNU herd. Microkernel could help there with uh, re uh, reducing the trusted computing base. It, um, so, uh, will we be having a boring life after that? Well, Jeremy Orions has some ideas. And, uh, well, Mark Weaver um, has some nice suggestions. So we have something working. Uh, well, the next step is uh, maybe other architectures and, well, make it more audit auditable. So are we really doing this just to address the trusting trust attack? To be honest, I'm not sure. Uh, I think that the proper way to do computing is to use source code always and compile that into a binary. And I think the trusting trust attack is just a symptom of um, confusing a binary with actually compiling uh, a program from source. <laughs> so I'm very grateful for all the help that I got and uh, the support in this project. Many people are helping spreading the world or helping with code. Uh, so that's all folks. So the question is, I'm not very knowledgeable out, about hardware, but is there something we should do? Uh, yes, if you're knowledgeable about hardware, please do something.
Thank you.